And it says in to and to and Terah took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Haran his son's son, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife. And they went forth with him from her of the Chaldee, Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan, and they came into Haran and dwelt there. The Bible doesn't doesn't say that God spoke to Abram in Ur, which is the, the city that they were traveling from. But as you read on, you can tell that uh, Abram's father, when they got to Haran and he, and he had died, was 205 years old. So the scholars think they know that Abram had a calling to leave Ur and go to Canaan. Ur was a city, and it was uh, it was a, a spectacular city. It was the most up to date city in ancient time at that time. So here you have a man, but in that city was paganism. There was no god. There, people didn't worship God until God spoke to Abram. Abram saw paganism all around him. Even though it was a spectacular city and bustling with merchants and, and up-to-date, what, what back then was up-to-date technology. But they had it all. It was a spectacular city. But God, well, what was different, as, it, as Abram looked around, and saw all of these worship of pagan gods and idol uh, adultery. What was different is God spoke to him. It was a living God. It wasn't you worshiping something that didn't get a response. It was a God that came to him. Abram didn't go to God. God came to Abram. That's right. And he says, "I want you to leave." Think of that. So he probably went and told Dad, said, Dad, I had a high God, living God, come talk to me. His dad probably says, well, I'm going with you. But at the same time, that might have been not God's plan. But nevertheless, Terah went with him. So they traveled, and from Ur to Haram was 600 miles. When they got to 600, when they got to there, they settled there. Long walk, wasn't it? It was. 600 miles they traveled. Took all their belongings. Left his home place. Everybody that he knew besides his, his wife, his nephew, and his dad, and the people that traveled with them, he left his, his buddies, people he grew up with. I didn't, the Bible doesn't speak of his mother. But his relationship, his business, everything that he had, which at that time, in a city that was up to date, it was the best that the, that, that area knew. Toby, I, what, I, I know I've talked a lot this morning. That's faith. Yeah, that's faith. I mean, and we doubt, but that man went, walked. We wouldn't get in the car and drive. <laughs> he walked. And, and, you know, we're, we're, we'd have to have a moving van to move all the stuff. It, it, that, was, that was faith. Going somewhere you'd never been. But, I, but I, that's when, I, when you think about it, you're surrounded by paganism. People worship from everything until the living God talks to you. Mm -hmm. That's enough to stir any man. When somebody... When God talks to you in, a, in an outwardly verbal voice for you to audibly hear that no man in that whole area, I mean, you get, you get used to it. You get, they'll pray to a God. I mean, in Greece, they even had, um, it was in Paul. Paul said, 
you've gotten so bad that you've got a, st uh, a mound here to the unknown God, and you're worshiping Just to catch uh, a thing that's un even unknown. <laughs> he said, I serve a living God. So Abram heard that voice, and then he went to Haran, and, and they, they stayed there until his dad had died. And it says, in the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Now, we go, now we're in verse uh, 1 on chapter 12. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will shew thee. That gives you an, inch, that gives you an inclination that he'd already told Abram, I want you to travel to Haran. Now he got him to Haran. He said, now your dad has passed. Now, it's sort of, I think he wanted to, Abram on his own to start off with. But his dad came with him. And he, and he kept his dad. And he was faithful to Abraham. And he said, now your dad's gone. It's time to keep, go to where I told you to go. And be faithful. He said, he said leave everything. You, even, he said, now, his dad brought his stuff. He said, now, you leave that. Take only your stuff. He says, Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, into the land that I will shew thee. And I will make thee, he said, now he, he's, he's giving him an ultimatum. Now if you do this, if you take on this task, he says, And I will make thee a great nation. And I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. So he's telling him, you do this, I'm going to do this for you. It was a call and a promise to Abram. It was a sort of a tit for tat. So he said, I'll make thee a great nation, bless thee, and make thy name great, which we know that it is great today. He said, and thou shalt be a blessing. Now you think about that. He did not only am I going to bless you. So if you're going to be a blessing, what 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 do you got to do? You got to bless others. Mm -hmm. Now a lot of times you have people of wealth. A lot of people like to hang on their coattails because they like to get the spoils of the mm -hmm. what they have, whether they uh, the information they know, the inside trades or whatever. People like to hang around but at the same time if God blesses me or my father gives me a brand new ball I can play with that brand new ball all I want and it's my brand new ball but it's a lot more fun and a lot more blessing for me if I call up my buddy and say come over here because I got a new ball now, even though it's my ball and I'm blessed with that ball, I'm going to share it with you. Now, when people come around you, they might come around you for all the wrong reasons. They might say, well, he's got money or he's got this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over here and talk to him. But when they come and talk to you and you show them what God has done for you, it's not that to get a blessing material-wise. They see where the material-wise came from. It's come from God, not by them. So, when you see people, when, when oftentimes we say, well, he's just doing that because he's just, you know, trying to get close. But if you're a Christian and you have assets or you don't, and I'm not talking about it, you don't have to be rich. Or you, people, people, will get, people will get close to you if they want something. A lot of times if you don't hear from them until they need something. Hmm. But when they do come around and they need it, or they want it. We got to show them love. We got to show them Christ. Because that's how we share each other. That's how they see it. Because you can walk away. I can, I can have God in me. But if I'm, if I'm uh, rude. If I'm uh, self-centered. Or I don't talk to people. People don't know or can't see. The love that I may have for God. Mm -hmm. God changes us from within. And to mm -hmm. out. 
to show us that love. And that's how we, people ain't going to come become Christians or want to come to church if we don't show them what the love of God is. So he said, I'm going to bless you, but I want you to be that blessing. He said, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. And we all know for what all families of the earth be blessed through Abram's bloodline to the Leviticus bloodline all the way down through Jesus Christ. We have that gift through all that, that all families, all man, woman, and ch child has that gift and has that, has that ability to make heaven their home, to accept Jesus Christ for who he is through the bloodline of Abraham. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarai his wife and Lot his brother's son and all their substance that they had gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan and into the land of Canaan they came. So he took everything he had. Now, God gave him these promises and at the same time you got to look at the how much more faith that Abram had. He knew Sarai's wife was, couldn't have children. And here he is said he's going to be the father of nations. And he was thinking, you know, all the odds were stacked up against him. But, but he still had faith. He still acknowledged that voice of the living God. And he, he it was a faith that and that's why everybody, all Christianities of the Judaism and, and Islam, they all recognize Abram over his faith. His faith did not falter. So he took, took what was left, and only what, only what he had, and the souls that he had gotten in Iran. So as he prospered in Iran, he hired servants and people and when he hired these people, they became not so much his property, but, you know, they were part of his clan. And they went with him. But at the same time, like I, I told you before, they see God in Abram. They want to go with him, probably. They want to see him, you know, because he's being blessed. This is an Abram passed through the land into the place of Shism, into the plain of Moray, and the Canaanite was then in the land. When he stopped there, he was dead sinner, almost dead sinner in Canaan. And it was sort of a symbolic place for him to stop. What did he do? He pitched his tent and he built an altar. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said unto thy seed, will I give this land? And there built he an altar and unto the Lord who appeared unto him. Think about Abram. Wherever he went, he pitched his tent. And what did he do? He built an altar. If he was a nomad. He traveled. He, he had no place. He had no home. He left that. Probably had a nice home in Earth. Here he now he's down to a tent and his livestock, his wife, nephew. But, but when when you're in a country and you start seeing a tent, you know right then they don't belong here. If somebody comes through here and pitches a tent on the side of the road, you know they're not from around here. <laughs> somebody brings a camper in here, you know they're not from here. So when he pitched his tent, what did he do? He built an altar. <laughs> so what's that showing? That's an outward appearance of saying, I'm going to publicly serve God. I'm going to show them that if somebody came by or I can just imagine travelers going from town to town say, did you see the tent? Somebody down there pitching a tent. Stopped by and see what he was doing. Thought he had a campfire. No, that was an altar. He, he serves 
He says he serves an almighty God, the creator of all things. He was being, he was showing who he was, what he was. Do we do that as Christians? Even though we're out here, do, does people see our, pitch, uh, our tent pitched and our altar built? Because, you know, Moses, I mean, uh, Abram was showing that. He was living it. People, and I know when people would go by, they would see it. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and Hay on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. So here we have it to end this particular lesson that he's still traveling. God hadn't told him to stop. Mm -hmm. he, he only goes by what word he sees. But God is leading. He's doing what God told him. God's going to bless him. He still, we know the story of Abraham, but Abraham has not even, hasn't hit his blessing yet. He's, he's right now, he's just a no man. But he's banking on everything that God told him will be fulfilled because God spoke it to him. His faith did not sway. He kept going. His father died. God said, all right, come on. It's time to go. He did. And as life, when we become Christians, you know, we have, we have that promise of making heaven our home. We have, a, we are, it's, it, the victory has, has been won if we just finish the race. And we get saved, we have, only thing we have to do is keep our faith. We, we know the outcome. Abraham didn't know, the, he didn't know the outcome. He didn't know how it was going to be. He, he's got a barren wife, but he says, I'm going to be a father of nations. He didn't know. We do know. It's an easy thing. If God's calling you, take it. Accept it. Now, we know Abram, we know he has his ups and downs. We are one too. Life ain't going to be hunky-dory for us. But it's a lot better when you've got God and Jesus to lean on than to try to do it all on your own. Because they said, what? what? What was his promise? I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. So even through death, we're winners. Because death cannot hold us. Because we have an appointment with the Father. Mm -hmm. And that's a promise. Mm -hmm. when, when God started making promises to Abram and fulfilling them, that's a testimony for us. Saying, look what God done for Abraham. Them same promises apply to us. We are part of that, that promise. When... Uh, we're part of that kinship as, as we sing, it, as Zach sings that song. Mm -hmm. We're part of that bloodline. Mm -hmm. That same promise applies to us as it does to them. When Jesus died on that cross and the blood was applied, that, applied, uh, that blood is applied to us when we take him as our Lord and Savior. And the only thing he wants us to do is be, uh, go and be a blessing to someone else. To show him. As, as, as Christians, we need to go out, pitch our tent, and build our, build our altar. And be that blessing. And let somebody else play with our new ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's good.